wanted. Gutsy pilots willing to fly vintage airplanes near the Arctic Circle in sub-zero temperatures. Well, I know it sounds like a crazy want ad, but believe it or not, there's a group of aviation daredevils known as ice pilots who do this every day. Our Alex Mihailovich went along for a white knuckle ride. Winter time, the engines are too cold to start. You bring up these huge diesel frost fires. Once they're going, they operate, you know, just fine. Something that just intrigues me about the rumbling, flying sort of tanks and that sort of stuff. Rookie pilot Scott Blue gets to fly vintage airplanes that rolled off the assembly line in World War II. The company that keeps them in the air is the now world famous Buffalo Airways based in Yellowknife in the Northwest Territories. I flew World War II cargo planes in 2009 in the Canadian Arctic in minus 40. Not too many people can say that. Buffalo Airways owns the largest airworthy fleet of DC-3s and DC-4s in the world. This DC-4 goes back nearly 70 years. It was designed in the 1930s to be the world's first transatlantic passenger plane. But when World War II broke out, this bird went to war, ferrying troops and supplies instead. Today, Buffalo Airways uses these planes to move all kinds of cargo to some of the most remote places in the Arctic. Mikey McBride grew up around these planes. He's Buffalo Airways general manager and the son of the company's owner and founder. It's kind of like being dropped in New Jurassic Park where people actually call Joe Jurassic Park after my father Joe. Captain Buffalo Joe McBride founded Buffalo Airways nearly 40 years ago. A demanding boss who can be tough on his employees, but is always a softie when it comes to his dog. I wanted to fly airplanes and uh, operate airplanes and this was my reason to do it. Joe accepts resumes from pilots all over Canada. As 24-year-old pilot Gord Cooling will tell you, the select few that Buffalo Joe accepts into his company have to work their way into the cockpit. I knew that I have to go north and uh, experience the cold and work hard. And being a pilot in Yellowknife has absolutely nothing to do with long haul flights to Singapore or fancy uniforms. This is the reality. Loading up your plane at 5.30 in the morning, de-icing the wings and fueling it up yourself so you can get this bird in the air. And with sub-zero temperatures being the norm in this part of the world, the ground and the aircraft are usually covered in ice, which can lead to some serious injuries. Give you better perspective, this wing is about 12 feet up in the air and it is slick, making de-icing a dangerous task. But cuts, scrapes and broken bones aside, everything the crew does to prep these planes is critical, ensuring vital supplies reach the people who need them. Buffalo Airways hauls over 4 million pounds of freight to isolated communities each year. And as for people, 6,300 passengers are transported by the company within the territories. They contribute a lot to the community. Customer service is really good. And here to provide that service are people like Quebec City aviator Audrey Marchand. So I've been flight attending since April, and before that I was just a rampy, and yes, I'm a pilot. But like many others, Marchand is stepping down from her Buffalo Air position before ever making it into the cockpit. I just miss home really bad. Buffalo Airways training captain Justin Simley will tell you, like Marchand, most of those who come to fly at Buffalo simply don't last. Odds are not good. Most of the guys that come up here, uh, you know, uh, they take one look at the winter and they say sayonara. But with four years under his belt, Gord Cooling proved he has the right stuff. Gord's 24. He's probably the youngest DC-3 captains on the planet. I hopped on Cooling's passenger run from Yellowknife to Hay River. Flying in this old DC-3 is not the type of air travel most of us are used to. You can smell the oil in here. The vibration goes right through your body and it is loud. And on the rare occasion, things can turn ugly, as Scott Blue and Captain AJ DeCoste found out. You hear that backfire, Scott? I, I think it came from this side. Yeah. He's definitely running rough. Yeah, we have to shut it down. Fortunately, in its 40-year history, Buffalo Airways has avoided catastrophe. We haven't had one single fatality, which is, uh, is a pride point for everybody. Aviation and flying up the north is a calculated risk. Last year, Mikey McBride took a calculated risk of a different kind, opening up a brand new chapter for his father's company and the young pilots who work here. Almost 40 years of doing this, what made you want to do a reality show? 
I want to make it quite clear, it wasn't me, it was but last born son of mine. Out of your hats, boy. Ice Pilots NWT follows the adventures of the crew at Buffalo Airways. The best thing about the TV show so far that I've seen, people that you haven't heard from a while get a hold of you and say, hey, I saw you on TV. Ask anyone at Buffalo and they'll say the show has not changed a single thing that goes on around here, making this reality show, well, real. We didn't cherry pick the good and the bad. The cameras run here 24-7. For nine months. All those months of lights, camera and action had little bearing on Scott Blue's career choice. He'll continue to reach for the stars the only way he knows how. Everybody has that picture of a pilot, you know what I mean? Arm in arm with the, you know, stewardesses rocking into the Four Seasons and pick a city, you know? So, for sure. Would that be fun to do later on? Absolutely. For more of the action, you can watch the series Ice Pilots every Wednesday night on the History Channel.